What is up, homies? My name is Felix, and I am sitting in direct sunlight right now. It's so incredibly bright. But anyways, I hope you guys are all doing well today, and what are we doing here in this video, you might ask? So probably all of you guys know about Waves plugins. They're some of the most popular plugins in our music community, but honestly, a lot of the, you know, top 10 Waves plugins lists and stuff like that are all from weird engineer people. Don't get me wrong, I do my fair share of mixing songs and engineering and stuff as well, but I'm a producer, man. I make beats. That's what, that's like my thing. That's what I do. So naturally, I thought it would be a good idea to make a list of the top I don't know, 10, I don't, what, what, uh, the top 10-ish Waves plugins for producers, for us, you know, beat maker, producer people out there. Make sure you guys are checking out my Instagram and my SoundCloud, down in the description below, along with the playlist of songs I produce, my beats or my Discord, all that stuff, go check it out if you'd like to do so, and now we can get into this video. So the first plugin that I personally use all the time is called DBX160, a really good drum compressor, that's what I use it for. The real version, the actual, you know, physical hardware version, is a very famously good drum compressor as well, naturally, because the plugin is an emulation of the real thing. Just take a little drum sample like this. And then you just put the DBX160 on this bad boy, in mono, of course. And then you can just mess with the settings a little bit. I usually turn up the output gain quite a bit, and then turn down some of the compression stuff. And then it also might sound good to boost the volume a little bit, like into the compressor. I use the DBX160 pretty much any time I want to have like a very vintage sound on my drums. If I have a live drum sample or if I am using my vintage drum kit that you guys can purchase right now at the link in the description, I'll pretty much always put this drum compressor on it just to give it that vintage -y sound. So yeah, DBX160, amazing plugin, gotta have it. So another really, really good Waves plugin for producers is called the Aphex Vintage Oral Exciter. I think that's what it's called. And basically what this thing does is you just put it on your master, just slap it on your master channel when you've pretty much finished your beat. And I usually click on the presets thing and then go to mastering and then crisp mastering, beefy mix, one of those two. And then just mess with the settings a little bit, maybe bring the mix down a little bit or up as you see fit. And basically what it does is it just adds like a little bit of high end to your sound, just gives it more, you know, airiness, more breathiness. But it's just a really nice plugin and it has a gain booster or whatever in there as well. So yeah. So the next plugin here is two plugins that I'm basically grouping into one. It's Rvox slash Rcomp. Rvox is a really famous plugin for just slapping on your vocals and it just makes them sound better. They're both compressor plugins and they do pretty much the same thing. Rcomp is basically the same thing as Rvox. It just has a few more, you know, controls and parameters and stuff that you can mess around with. But yeah, here's a little guitar sample. I'm gonna slap some Rvox on there, bring up the volume, and it's gonna sound nice and compressed without having to really know anything about compression at all. When I was debating on whether I should get Rvox or Rcomp, I was like, but Rvox is only for vocals, can't use it on anything else, which is not true. You can use it on whatever you want to. Rvox is super easy to use. Rcomp is maybe better for those who kind of know more what they're doing. Totally up to you, but both very good compressor plugins. So next up here, we've got the CLA plugin. So I'm talking about CLA guitars, CLA bass, CLA vocals. Not so much the vocal one, because I don't really use it very often, but bass and guitar. They're basically just like amp simulations, but they can basically just give your, you know, gross, dry sounding guitars a little bit of life. CLA Unplugged you can kind of use for acoustic guitar type stuff, but inside CLA Guitars there's also a tab that has acoustic guitar presets. So honestly, if you're going to get some of the CLA plugins, the two that I would recommend are CLA Guitars and CLA Bass. If you don't have a bass guitar, you're probably not going to need the bass one. But yeah, if you're doing guitar and bass stuff, definitely got to have both of these plugins. So next up on the list here, I'm going to group two plugins together again. I'm going to put the CLA 2A and the CLA 3A compressors together. Both of them are compressor plugins. They're very simple and easy to use. There's two knobs for each one. There's like peak reduction and gain, I think. The only difference between the two is just kind of how they make your stuff sound. I would say the 2A I use for kind of just like everything, just as like a general compressor, put it on the master every once in a while. But the 3A I kind of tend to use on my bass lines and stuff from time to time. That being said, I also just kind of use them interchangeably just whenever I feel like it. Here's how the 3A sounds on a bass line. And then here's how the two A sounds on the same bass line. 
Personally, if I was gonna go with just one of these, I would probably go with the 2A. I think the 2A is just a little better, a little bit more versatile. All right, so this next one, not everybody's gonna agree with. I know a lot of you guys like your visual EQs where you can see all the frequencies and everything, but I've kind of grown a little bit fond of the API 560 EQ. I like to put it on my drums and stuff to you know EQ out some of the frequencies in my drums. You can also use it for whatever you want. To be honest, it kind of works the same as a visual EQ. It's like the top is the high frequencies, the bottom is the low frequencies, and you almost make a curve with the knobs. So it's not that hard to get used to, and it sounds nice. I like it. There's obviously a million EQs out there, but this is just one of my personal choices. So another plugin here, this one's pretty standard, is H Delay. It's a delay plugin. It sounds nice. It's got some cool effects in there. To be honest with you, it's not my main delay plugin, but I do use it from time to time. But if you are looking for a delay plugin, H Delay is a good way to go because it's kind of like an industry standard thingy type thing. Here's how it sounds on a little lead. All right, so the next one here is Retrofy. I know you guys, as am I, are tired of the 57 million lo-fi plugins that are out there. And when I first heard about the Retrofy plugin, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. It's just another lo-fi plugin thing. But however, when I actually tried to use it and mess around with it a little bit, I found out that it actually is kind of cool. There's quite a few presets to choose from, cassette and vinyl presets, stuff like that. But then there's also presets for your drums, for your guitar. This plugin will work with whatever you might want to put it on. For something like this little live drum loop that I got going on right now, I'll probably go to the beat section, do one of these. That one's pretty crappy. But this one right here, this one is pretty cool. It's a little similar to RC20, the way it's got the space and then the noise thing and whatever. But in my opinion, it's got quite a different sound from RC20. RC20 I use for kind of more melodic stuff, I feel like. And this I could see being used for a lot more of like drum loops and percussion loops and things like that. It is actually a pretty good plugin, even though, you know, it's just another lo-fi plugin over here. All right, so next up on our list, I'm once again gonna group two plugins together. I'm gonna put J37 Tape and Kramer Tape together. Both of them are tape emulation plugins and if you're going for that vintage kind of sound but not like a super over the top vintage sound more of like a realistic vintage sound both of these plugins are really good ways to go just slap them on your master and then tweak the settings a little bit and you're pretty much good to go i think a lot of people think that with kramer tape or j37 that you're gonna get like a bunch of vinyl noise and you know a bunch of wow and flutter and you're gonna get like this super lo-fi sound but that's just really not how it works with these plugins the vinyl effect is very subtle and it's really not going to be something that's in your face and super crazy As you can hear, it's not super noticeable. If anything, the settings were kind of high, uh, how I just had it right there. So yeah, you're not gonna get anything crazy, but it's nice to have because it does just add that extra little step into your mastering chain. That'll make your track sound really nice. So the last one here is a plugin that you wouldn't normally think would be used in the way that I'm gonna show you, but it's called Ovox. A lot of people use it to get like weird auto tune -y kind of effects on their vocals, but I'm gonna be using it to get some weird sounds on a little lead that I have here. I'm just gonna flip through some of the presets and you'll hear what it does to the lead sound it does some pretty cool stuff <laughs> As you can hear right there, pretty much every preset just totally transformed the sound that I had. I was just going through the basic presets, but you can obviously mess with all the different parameters and stuff. So yeah, this can be really cool if you want to actually record your own vocal samples. It's, you know, kind of like a Kanye thing or whatever. This is a really good plugin for that, but it's also really good if you want to put it on some guitars or put it on some lead sounds, put it on whatever you might want. It's just a really cool, very versatile plugin. So yeah, that is pretty much going to do it for my list of the top 10 or however many this was uh, Waves plugins for producers specifically. I hope you guys enjoyed my little list here. Some of these plugins hopefully are useful to you. Let me know what your favorite Waves plugin is. My probably personal favorite is the DBX160 because I just love the way it makes those drums sound. So yeah, make sure you guys go check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below along with the playlist of songs I produce, my beats from my Discord, all that stuff. Go check it out if you'd like to do so. And I will see you guys next time. Inside the box side I'm sitting pretty in the cockpit She move with the control Or do we want ya I'm by shake, chug and chug and take it slow Challenge